You see, Zechariah was a man who was very faithful in the sight of God, a priest under King Herod. And while performing his duties, God found favor, found favor with him and sent the angel Gabriel. Now remember, Gabriel is one of the who? Archangels, that's there. And Gabriel, may God speak to us. May God speak today to you as he spoke to Gabriel. And I believe that God is always, always speaking to us. Maybe not through Gabriel, but always through his holy word. Is he not? Amen. See, there is a specific command that he tells, he tells him. He says that, his, that he will name his son John. Now John is, an, is not normally in Jewish tradition. They always do what? Name their child, their firstborn, after the father. But he said he would be called John. And we a prophet to be used by the Lord to bring back people to God. But Zechariah had some problem in this area of faith because realize that he looked at himself as we look at ourselves as humans and say, I'm old, I'm fragile. I can't do those things. He doubted. He questioned literally the angel rather than hearing God and accepting what God has sent to him through the angel. Remember, look at verse 19, and the angel answered, I am Gabriel, and I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. Now, I don't know about you, but what would you do if you had an angel come and tell you that? Or tell you something very similar? After they probably woke me up a little bit, you know. I would probably wonder, did I just hallucinate or what? What was it? And I'm thinking that about this time that Zechariah has no clue that he may be in trouble right here. Because remember, Zechariah says, hey, I'm old. And you know, in standing in church and doing church stuff, sometimes, you know, sometimes we may doubt God about God doing certain things. We may doubt him. And we may be just like Zechariah. So don't, don't condemn him, okay? Don't condemn him. Verse 20, And now you will be silent and will not be able to speak until the day this happens because you did not believe my words, which will come true at their proper time. Now remember, meanwhile right now, that everybody is standing outside of the synagogue waiting for him to come out, waiting for him to finish his duties, and they're waiting, just like sometimes we're waiting in church, worshiping, and wondering, what is taking him so long? What is taking so long? And he goes in, and he does, he burns the incense, and comes out, and off to the house he goes, right? Off to the casa he goes, but not necessarily. You see, there's a lesson in here for us to see immediately, and the lesson is this, that sometimes when we are worshiping, or we're in church, we're in church. There is more than we can, we can see with our own eyes. There's more that we need literally to see with our spiritual eyes and our heart. I see God is moving in someone's life. Or God needs somebody to come and talk to him. Maybe you might be that person that spends that extra couple of seconds with that person. And just ask the question, is there anything I can do for you? I didn't say, how are you doing? No, no, no. Is there anything I can do for you? Anything at all? And spend that extra time. You see, sometimes God has many, many things in store for us, more than we can expect. And so Zechariah comes out mute, and the people are wondering what literally happened. And when we get into the presence of God, we ought to experience that same thing. Well, maybe not be mute, but that same awesomeness, that same process of him, of knowing that God is there. You see, of course, all of us are not going to be stricken mute. We're not. There are some people we'd like to have stricken mute, right? Oh, and there's no doubt about that. But there ought to be a change when God is coming to your life. When you see the power of the Holy Spirit, come into your life. 
When you see the power of God, there needs to be that change that's there. I can remember in the book of Exodus, chapter 34, where Moses, Moses came down from the mountain after being in the presence and talking with God. And his face just had such a shine about him that the people wondered that he literally had a place of veil on. They knew that he had been in the presence of God. They knew that God had been with him. Wouldn't that be wonderful if it happened to all of us at early bird one time? If all of us, or even right now, when we leave today, that someone looks at you and says, there's this glow about you. What is it? And you say, well, today I met God and I worship God. You see, there ought to be a very clear change in our life. A change in our life when we come encountered with Christ. Is there not? There needs to be there. If it's not there, then the question is, did you really meet Christ? Did you really meet Christ? You see, Zechariah, there was a change. And when God says he's going to do something, we should count on it, not doubt his word. You see, so Zechariah now is mute, and he's about to be a father. And, and he's willing to obey. You see, if we look at this, Zechariah is about to follow God's commands it here. If you look at the book of Luke, again, chapter, 5, chapter 1, verses 57 through 66, reads as follows. Now the time came for Elizabeth to give birth, and she bore a son. And her neighbors and the relatives heard the Lord, heard that the Lord had shown her great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. And on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child. And they would have to call, they would call him Zachariah after his father. But his mother answered, No, he shall be called John. And he said to her, None of your relatives, and they said to her, None of your relatives are called by that name. And they made signs to his father, inquiring what he wanted him to be called. And asking, and writing for a tablet, he wrote, His name is John. And they wondered. And immediately his mouth was opened, and his tongue was loosened, and he spoke, Blessing God. And fear came on all their neighbors. And all the things were talked about, about through all the hills, hill country of Judea. And all who heard them laid them up in their hearts, saying, What then will be this child? For the hand of the Lord was with him. For nine months, for nine months, Zechariah had not said a word. But he had God's promise. Nine months he was mute. Nine months. All he could do was do sign. And all he could do was write. And when John was born. And he was preparing for circumcision. And the naming. The neighbors came. And they were wondering what took them so long to come again. So long. And there is none more than meets the eye. There is much, much more that meets the eye than we must grasp here. Zechariah knew that God was faithful and he must follow. That God will follow through. And when he followed through and obeyed God, Zechariah could speak again. And to the astonishment of the so-called Joneses, this miracle happened and then they talked. Verse 66 says, what then is this child going to be? What then is this child going to be? For the Lord's hand was on him. You see, when we follow God, we must, we must tell. We must tell what God has done for us. Many, many people, many believers will say that God is good, right? They will say that. But do they really share what God has done for them? Oh, God has blessed me. If you tell that to an unbeliever or somebody who does not know Christ, what do you think they're going to say? What do you think they're going to think when you say, oh, I'm blessed? 
They don't have a clue what it means to be blessed, first of all. They don't. So we must say, besides I'm blessed, this is how I'm blessed, and this is why I'm blessed. Because I believe in the only begotten Son. I believe in Him. We must tell what the work that God is doing in our life, the big things and the small things, the big things and the small things, we must tell what God is doing in your life. When was the last time, church, that you told somebody what God was doing in your life? When was the last time you did that? When was the last time you, I'm not going to use the word witness, when was the last time you said that God is good and this is why he's good? God is good, God is gracious to me because this is why he's gracious to me. God is loving and this is why he is loving to me. Answer that question. When was the last time you actually said that? That God loves me and this is how he loves me. How he loves me. You see, we see here something that is happening with Zacharias too. Because of his, his unbelief or his doubt, as we say, we see that when we follow God's direction, when we follow God's direction in anything that we do, there is always a healing and a praising that comes. A healing and a praising that comes when we are obedient to God. God may heal us in ways that we don't even realize how he heals us. God heals the brokenhearted. God uses the brokenhearted for his glory for his purpose, so you can minister to someone else. Following God's direction, as I said, leads to healing. And upon being able to speak, Zechariah began to glorify God in heaven. To glorify God with his words. If you turn to the book of Luke chapter 1, it's not, in your, it's not up on the text up there, and you'll see Zechariah's prophecy in verses 67 through 80. You'll see that. And we're not going to go through that right now due to the time restraints. But just go take it, write that down, and just re read this afterwards. Luke chapter 1, verses 67 through 80. And it's called Zechariah's Prophecy. And he's glorifying God. He's glorifying God by all means. By his actions. By his words. You see, my wife used to tell me something a long time ago. And she hasn't told me in a, in this in a long time. Maybe I busted that, that myth. I don't know. My wife always used to tell me, action before words. You know, guys ever been told that? Action before words. In other words, I would, I would say all these great, wonderful things. By the way, I'm still working on my bathroom. So... Uh, <laughs> Action before words. And that's exactly what we're talking about. Zechariah was action. God knew that he could say the words because he was a priest. He could say all the things that he needed to say. But God wanted to see if Zechariah was going to be faithful. Action before words. When God moves, moves upon us, we need to give in. Yeah, we need to give in to humble ourselves and to follow the direction and to follow his lead. When we are saved, we praise God, do we not? But are we praising him today? Are we? We may praise him through the songs that we sing, but really, do we praise him every day of our life? Do we? Do we praise him with our lifestyle? Do we praise him with our wallet? Do we praise him with our checkbook? Do we praise him by giving up things? Do we praise him and do we put him first or do we put ourselves first? Joy is a very clear acronym that we use very, very, very clearly. J-O-Y. Jesus, others, 
and then yourself. Jesus, others, and yourself. I'll give you guys Jesus too. Jesus, others, and yourself. Joy. That's really what joy is. When you give Jesus to someone. When you put them first before yourself. We praise God. And when we go through this Advent season right now, it's a time for us, as I said last week, it's a time for us to look back over the last 11 months and see where God's hand has been. I challenge you today. I challenge you today and bring this next Sunday. I would like for you to go back for the last 11 months and see where God's hand has been upon you. Where God had moved in such a way that you knew it was only God who could do it. I challenge you to do that. And I challenge you that if you can't think of any, then please come see me. And we'll go through those. Because sometimes we get so blinded by the world. We get so blinded that we forget to see the goodness of God. We forget to see that God just loves us so much. We forget to see, or really we forget to share. We forget to share the goodness of God. If we do not share, we will forget. If you do not share, you will forget. That's why God says, share my goodness. Share my things I have done you. I've done for you. Praise the Lord in everything that you do. Take time to glorify the one and only. Take time to say thank you, Lord, for who you are. Take time to say to him, I love you, Lord. Teach me how to love you more in the next year. You see, John the Baptist was born for a sole purpose, and that was to make way for the coming of the Lord. He was a pathfinder that we call. He was the one that, was said, that said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at now. He was the one that kept bringing people, reminding people that God is good, that God was always with them, that God loved them. But God was sending them a Savior, the Messiah. John, John the Baptist had a purpose. You and I all have the same purpose as John the Baptist. We do. All of you, have the, myself included, have that same purpose. is to say the Messiah has come already. The Messiah is here. Will you receive the Messiah? This is the good news that he has to share you. All of us can be called John the Baptist. And I'm not talking about denominations. I'm talking about the purpose that he has. Christ came, was given to this world for the sole purpose, for the sole purpose of dying for you and me. Christ came to take that ultimate penalty for me and for you. Christ came to be that bridge the Almighty God. Christ came so that way we could be reconciled to the Father. Christ came so we would have love, joy, peace, hope, eternal life. Christ came that we would have hope that there was much more to life than this little, little shell we have now. When God promises you something, He is faithful to complete everything. Philippians 1.6 says this, And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. That's a promise that he's given to you. That's a promise. But there is a part that we must fulfill. The part that we must fulfill is that we must be obedient. We must be obedient to what he asks us, regardless of how large or how small. We must be obedient. 
and this morning. What has God promised you that you are not doing? Think about this for a moment. What has God promised you that you're not doing? And people say, well, you know, God has said this, you know, I felt this, but yet I, it's not happening. I'm trying to do this. Then my question to you is very simple. Is there any sin in your life? Is there any sin in your life? Is there any unconfessed sin? Because sin blocks the blessings. Sin blocks the joy. Sin blocks the peace that you will receive. That God wants to give you. So if there's sin in your life. Or something you've been disobedient to God. I would encourage you to confess it to Him. And ask for His forgiveness. For he's always willing to forgive you. Is there something that you need to pray about? Then ask God for forgiveness. Is there something that you need to be, or someone you need to be reconciled to? Then go and be reconciled with that person. Is there someone or something that you need to ask for or ask to forgiveness? Repentance always gives way to praises. Repentance always gives way to praises of God. We cannot come to church or worship, sit here and then go home without encountering God. When I think of old Zechariah and how God dealt with him in his house, I wonder in my own life, God, is that what you're doing now? Think about this. Think about it for a moment. We need to obey God because God is speaking to His people through His Word every day. Do you need to pray about it? Do you need to ask for forgiveness? Let's bow our heads for a moment, if you would. And let's stop and just allow God to examine your heart and just see and ask the Father, ask the Lord Jesus, is there something, is there something that, that maybe I need to ask for forgiveness? Is there someone, is there someone that I need to go and say, will you forgive me? Is there someone or something that you need to take before the Father? that you need to take before the Lord Jesus? Is there someone that you need to share the gospel with? Is there someone that you need to embrace? Is there anything in your life that blocks the joy that God has for you today? Is there anything I plead with you. I beg you. Not to me. But the almighty God. Seek his forgiveness. Ask him. To mute your mouth if necessary. To mute your voice. This Advent season is a season. Of where we can really truly celebrate. Acknowledge the birth of Christ. But we can't do that if there are things blocking. Not at all. So take a few moments as we continue to allow God, the Holy Spirit, to examine our hearts. And if you desire prayer, meet me here at the altar and I'll pray with you. And if you've never received Christ as your Lord and Savior, Meet me here at the altar. Let's all stand as we pray.